Hello and welcome to session number 32 of Outliner's Guide to Lidaria. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. round number is Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How have you been? I'm scared. Worried? You're just stressed. Yeah, for for viewers, uh, the the party has been hard at work behind the scenes trying to come up with with a plan to survive the situation they're currently in. Because they're in a bad situation. <laughs> Do you feel confident? No. <laughs> no um, way. Well, I think we have what's essentially a Scooby-Doo plan. <laughs> <laughs> so... True. You guys go fight them, find the monster, while Daphne and I hide in the <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it works out. Some party members are like making sandwiches <laughs> in the kitchen, while everyone else is being chased by the monster. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, speaking of the situation that you guys are in, um, why don't we talk? about said situation and uh, remind everyone exactly what you got yourselves into. Hmm. Uh, today's recap is provided by Sid. Alrighty. Do you Let's need hope. music? I do. I have no music component in this recap. So if you want, if you want to have some background music, feel free to. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Bourgeois. Bourgeois is mad that we kicked him out of uh, the room. Now give me a moment and I'll set this up and pop it out. Oh my goodness, Sid. I can already tell. You can tell what it is? I can tell that it's going to be way more than, <laughs> than, we, than everyone else has been doing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know where we're on the schedule, but I'm definitely moving on to the avant-garde experimental <laughs> art exhibit part okay. of the, the recaps. Sorry. So, uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, so I'll just uh, start with a little explainer. We first find our party at the top of a cliff, where we see this centaur-like creature with a feline lower body, a humanoid upper body, and the head of a tiger carving these wooden whistles. We've definitely not seen those before. Um, and uh, the creature uh, sees our distraction of a fake glimmer, uh, picks up their composite bow and spears heading in a direction, but uh, our stealth is not that great, it turns out, and uh, they notice us and run away. And then we'd spent hours trying to follow their trail and not really get them being up anywhere. And then traps happen, and then we take a rest, and Squeak and Casimir continues to search. And then they find the remains of a tower on top of the <gasps> What? Where they hear the shill cry of an Armabastu ape emitting from a whistle on top of the tower. Way up there somewhere. Um... And then, as Squeak investigates this whistle, something happens. I'm not quite clear on exactly what, but maybe a trap, maybe an arrow, who knows. But Squeak can't be summoned back to Pip anymore. And that's that. Uh, and with all that happening, and Pip, you know, seeing that happening, essentially, uh, we decide to join them at the tower. Uh, we speak with Casimir, who saw this construct creature heading out of the tower some time ago, so was there recently. And then we investigate the tower and see that carved into the walls are these centaur feline beings with fur and walks. And there's this unknown written language that has some similarities to the Essen language, but none of us can read it at all. Uh, and then the ground starts rumbling and uh, there's a big Mama Vastu that <laughs> climbs the tower, <laughs> believing that one of their ch uh, one, yeah one of their children uh, is inside the tower, and uh, yeah after climbing it and heading the, onto the stairs, the stairs crumble because hey they're ruins they're not gonna hold a lot of weight, uh, and she falls down to the ground floor, and then a balance use there's a lot of danger. Talix is knocked unconscious, 
being grabbed by his legs. It's a bad time all around. And but everything seems so dire. Casimir makes a choice. His form grows into something like a wolfman lycanthrope kind of situation and begins fighting fighting the Mama Basu. And then what we believe to be the one who stares uh, starts shooting us with arrows, and that's not very nice. Honestly, I don't think we did anything wrong. Um, and then, yeah, we Pontifex almost gets struck with an arrow. Talix gets struck with an arrow right after being not unconscious. It's a bad time for Talix all around. Uh, and then there's a lot of fighting against the poor mama, Armabastu, and then she fades eventually. And then we try to regroup. Pontifex gets to heal Talix back awake again before Casimir decides to run outside to maybe fight the one who stares, maybe just run off. We have no idea, and it's a dire situation for everyone involved. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This yeah. is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, what sorcery is degree. this? Yeah, uh, it's just a little panorama shot. <laughs> I wanted to try something different. Yeah. Is this... Could we upload this as, like, the the background in <laughs> we can <laughs> oh yes yeah. we can <laughs> that's oh, so cool man. oh wonderful I loved it thank you good job close that close that very pretty the re has been capped or the cap has been read. <laughs> Here is we've... your um It was capped and then it was capped again. Panorama respiration? Is that a stretch? <laughs> Panorama oh, inspiration. Okay. Panorama inspiration. There we go. Is there... It only oh, took nice. me. Is there a character limit? It's pretty long. Uh is there? I don't know if there is. We can find out. There, there definitely is. I've, I've had it before naming things, but it's pretty long. <laughs> Panorama, banana, jamma, mama, inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> I, banana, I found, banana, skip, banana, so. I found the D character <laughs> limit. Wait, did I? Maybe I didn't. We can go deeper. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you can leave it like that. Alright, there Are it is. Are we stalling because we don't want to actually yeah. get back into this? <laughs> okay. Well then. Uh, um, hold on, there it is. Panorama, banana, mamma, jamma, wimp. <laughs> V5O, Panorama. <laughs> you paused yourself. Go on, now continue. <laughs> Read the second half of it. <laughs> banana, banana, oh mama, pajama. I'm trying to put it to the name game song, but it doesn't really work. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, let's All do right. it. All right, Hmm. The Armabastu's arm hits you at full force and you slam into the oh. floor of the tower. You feel the stone floor crack beneath the impact, but then a moment later, it feels smooth and unbroken. You quickly stand up, your body no longer racked with pain, and you find yourself bathed in blue light. The brilliant projection of a cube floats and spins a few feet away from you, about twice your height, suspended above a stone platform. Its light fills the area in this uh, large circular room, two stories tall. Its walls covered in shelves, stacks of books, and curious contraptions that you're unfamiliar with. A figure stands before the cube, his long white hair reaching halfway down his back. Without turning around, he says, Take a look at this. Uh, I'll get up and walk over and behold this strange cube. What, what, do I, what does it look like? It looks unlike anything you would have ever seen before. The cube's faces are covered in magical runes, and its entire form is pulsating with light. 
And the more you look at this shape, the more you think you're seeing something in it, or perhaps even just through it. Blurry masses of colors swirl together and then separate, and then they take more distinct forms. Roll an intelligence check. Thirteen. You're not entirely sure what you're looking at. It feels like there are pictures, um, some something uh, with uh, with a form, with uh, with order, but you cannot really grasp exactly what you're looking at. I'll I'll just turn to the drow instead. He well, is... As long as I'm here... Oh, oh I was oh. just gonna say he's very focused on this, just squinting and looking. As long as I'm here, I, I have some questions for you. Uh, uh, for one thing, what is your name? He does not look away. He's still... Uh, for. He even stays silent for a few seconds, almost feels like he didn't hear you, but at some point uh, um, he answers. I don't have one. Or you don't remember? It is my belief that names are given. I suppose there was never anyone to give me one. You don't remember any world aside from this one? I cannot say I remember anything outside of this, but I know there is something. I can almost see it. What is this here? What are you doing with it? He brings a hand up to his chin. I've been working. I've had a few conversations with other godlings like you, and the last one was inspiring. You want me to elaborate? Well, uh, yeah, please. Sometimes... I can see the world that you are from. Glimpses of it. It's always blurry, always vague. It's hard to understand anything, but what I see, I try to replicate here. And I have no control over these glimpses, these, these visions, but... I've come to realize that I see with greater clarity whenever you show up. Whenever anyone shows up, it's almost like you're opening a door, and for a moment I can see what's on the other side. And then you leave and the door is open again for just a moment, but you always close it behind you. Oh. It would be nice to keep it open. At all times. Perhaps even walk through it. I'm not quite sure what that would mean for us, given that uh, our way of opening that door isn't the most pleasant. But isn't that interesting, too? You come here when you're dying. Interesting and a bit concerning, yeah. But you don't stay when you do die. It's all about this passageway, this middle point between two states of being. Does it mean I am dying? Have I been dying this whole time? Can I finish the process? Can I interrupt it? What do you think? As far as we know, the only people who have met you here have been people who have been physically close to us. 
in the other world. I think maybe we're carrying you with us, some part of you, and that world. When I first met you, it was beneath or around some vision of the tree of Akhenoth. You remember the significance of the tree, right? It was the centerpiece of the world you created. The tree is always there. It's always the most vivid thing, the most clear. The one I understand the most, though I understand very little. But it doesn't mean anything to you. Nothing means anything. Well, that tree is very important in our world. I think maybe you might be connected to her in some way. Maybe you simply fell at her roots, and your spirit's been carried up with her. Well, we're carrying something of a piece of her ourselves. And anyway, I think that's where you are now. The pronouns you use for this tree. Is it... is she... alive? Well, yeah, very much so. Is she She's... dying? Not... not anymore. Can oh, I speak with her? Here. <laughs> Any way you could... bring her here? Or bring me to her? Maybe so, but... It's gonna be a while before we're ever back in that land again. And if you are where I think you are, it might be harder than... ...than I thought. But then also, something else might happen. If you're in the seed, something might change if we were to plant it. I definitely want to learn a lot more about you. For the first time <clears throat> during this whole conversation, uh, he turns to look at you um, for a few seconds, and then his attention snaps back to the cube that pulsates with light brighter and brighter, and he says, It's happening. Brace yourself. And Talix, you awaken in pain. Uh, back in the ruins of the tower, uh, unsure what happened or for how long you've, you've been out, but you feel yourself getting dragged away. And shortly <laughs> after that, uh, as you're standing at the entrance of the ruins, for one moment you turn your back to the outside, and you're struck with pain once more. The world swirls, and you're engulfed in darkness, and you hear that voice again, saying, Oh, back so soon. Look, look! You're back exactly where you were, and the cube still shines, and I'll take uh, another intelligence check. Okay. Oh. Nope. Ten. There's still movement within it. It's uh, beautiful, almost, uh, in in a way that looking at a painting that you don't quite understand, but you feel there's meaning behind it, and you're wondering what, what the purpose is of what the person who created it was trying to communicate, and it feels like the, the drow uh, that's in front of it, uh, one hand outstretched, outstretched to touch it. It seems like he's on the verge of figuring something out. His hand goes through the cube, it's nothing but light. Uh, there's a projection of the hand's shadow on the ceiling of the room. Uh, he wiggles the fingers and pulls his arm back and he looks a little disappointed. Are you trying to reach into the other world? He takes a deep breath, shakes his head. I'd like to. You know, uh, what 
Well... We might have heard of someone else like you. Uh, people like you haven't existed in our world for a long time, or that, that was the thought. People like me? Gods? People who look like you. Not gods in our world, just people. Like the rest of us. You know, if you ever were a part of our world, it was probably a very long time ago. Things then... might be very different and scary for you there. But if you wish to see it, maybe... Maybe that's something we can work on on the other side. I never really wished for anything until you guys started showing up. And the knowledge that there is something beyond this, beyond me, that I cannot reach, that I cannot change. It's maddening. Forgive me, I'm just... Things on the other side aren't going so great for us right now. Things? Now that I'm thinking about it. There are... Things. Happening. Events. Always. Tell me about them. Well, hopefully... No one else will be joining us. But... I'm not so sure. I wouldn't mind. We have important work to do over there, and uh, we've got kind of caught up in something. There's something that wants to hurt us, something I haven't seen anything like before. And I don't think there's anything I can do to help him. Why not stay? Stay in a dream. Stay with me. But even you grew tired of it. As soon as you knew there was something more, right? I don't think I could exist forever, knowing that, in a place like this. Not yet, anyway. The stranger pauses. He brings both hands behind his back and gives a long, solemn nod. You're right. That would not be enough. Still, your presence would certainly help with this. You being here it makes things clearer. Can you make anything out? What do you see? A great white shape. Everything else is gray and green. It's cold and old left alone for a long time Ugh. I can't can't see oh you've got it that's that's where we were yeah an old tower a place built by people we'd never known to exist before now. There's a lot to learn in that world. A I think uh, one way or another, we're going to try to make you a part of it, okay? Maybe we can learn about it together. 
assuming I get out of this. I find this to be acceptable. In the meanwhile, I'll work on making that a part of this. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just, uh, sit and see what happens. I might be leaving you soon. I might be back. Try not to die. That would yeah. be unfortunate. And Talix. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> um, you feel yourself slipping away. And soon you're out of that room. And we can continue where we left off last time. <clears throat> the very um, last thing that happened, it was Casimir's turn, and uh, his, his werewolf form <clears throat> rushed out of the ruined tower. Becca? What would you like to do? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think Tech, um, knowing that everyone's back inside, uh, he would go to the entrance and see what the situation is. Tech, be careful. We must know what is happening out there. What, what was Remember the key to hold again? down uh, right mouse button. Right mouse button. <clears throat> yeah, you have to hold them both, basically. <laughs> there both is buttons. there is fire sort of like right at the center of the front entrance, it's but I think you could this. like maybe squeeze through the sides. Because <laughs> it's only five foot feet wide. How far yeah. do you want to come? Uh, Probably only about there. Mm -hmm. Right before the um, right before the fire? Yeah. Okay. Um, in between the flickering green flames, uh, uh, you can see Casimir in the process of running down the, sta the stairs, uh, leaping past the last few uh, steps and dashing straight forward and slightly to the left. Uh, roll perception check. Okay. Uh, and with an 18, that's all you see. Okay. <laughs> He's still running, but no danger. Get yourself to your feet. Yep, that's all Tekka will do. Okay. Uh, take it from your position. Um, as you're as you're looking into the forest, into the uh, uh, where the vegetation gets a little bit thicker, uh, you see nothing to the left, to the right. Uh, you you lean forward a little bit. You try to to peer between the flames in a moment when the wind blows and uh, your your vision is cleared, and uh, an error into Casimir's arm. He owl, howls in pain, and then he continues running, uh, adjusting his direction. As you, uh, the moment when the arrow strikes him, you see the two red dots of light. Um, you bring your focus on uh, on them, um, and you realize why you weren't seeing uh, the rest of the machine at all. Um, it appears that where uh, the first time you met it, it was this. Uh, uh, metal construction um, 
where the, the, the metal was uh, shining and glistening in the sunlight. But right now, uh, it's covered in mud, in leaves, and it's blending in with the vegetation. And the moment when it uh, um, lowers its head, uh, it completely disappears from view, from view again. Brook, it's your turn. <clears throat> Can I hold movement? Ah, uh, yeah. I think he will then just look outside and then look to the others, and then I will hold my move action. Hold a dash. Yeah. Okay. And the trigger is? <laughs> the group deciding to run after. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure thing. If you've been hearing a cat meowing, Bourgeois is very anxious right now, very nervous. Pontifex? Yeah. I think, like, as... Because this is all kind of happening simultaneously, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, is Casimir going to be okay, or should I bring him back? Think fast. Um, uh, everyone he's can... like looking at Brooke, yeah. Oh, all of you can just, like, uh, uh, answer. Right sure, there. anyone can chime in, but he, he's he's asking Brooke, because Pontifex doesn't know anything about Casimir. I think... He sings for a second, and... Then puts his five thumb more. up. You what? Uh, he puts his thumb up. There's a yes. <laughs> Interpret that as your wish. I'm gonna move to here, um, and I'm gonna cast. Can I see Casimir? Yeah. Looking at the, I'm gonna cast command on him. It's a 60 foot range, and that it doesn't look remotely close to 60. So I don't want to try to measure in this building. Uh, and the command is just uh, return. Okay. Uh, so wisdom saving throw, yeah. Yeah, DC 14 wisdom save. Hmm. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. okay. We will see on his turn. Oh no! <laughs> and then he's gonna back up. I hope. <laughs> That's it. Pip, your turn. Okay. Uh, Pip just begins bounding down the stairs, and as he's doing so, is chucking a healing potion. Okay. Uh, which is 2d4 plus 2, I believe? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Oh, snap! Uh, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and he's going to say in Talix's mind, Talix, are you okay? What's going on? Where's Casimir? And that's it. Okay, Talix. Uh... Talos is a little out of it still, uh, back still against the wall. He's just going to kind of meekly shrug, but he is going to dig through his backpack and also take out a healing potion and drink it. And roll two ones. No! Oh, oh my goodness! Oh, oh, nice! Aha, nice. <laughs> uh, I just have to call it, and then it won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, mostly just waiting to see what everyone else is gonna do. He's not not in a great way right now. Okay. But he is gonna take out his shield this time. <laughs> Alright. So uh let's roll one more thing for Casimir. Well, okay. Um, Tekka, you're the one, only one with uh, um, view of this as uh, uh, the lupine form of Casimir turns around and on all fours moves forward oh, no. <laughs> uh, into the fire <laughs> no 
He'll, he'll have to make a dexterity saving throw. Did he make that last time? Uh, yeah, he took damage. <clears throat> he took damage, yeah. But did he make the saving throw? Uh, or just take damage? I, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I have a six. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to hurt him. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> when can I drop concentration if I see him oh, coming back? Concentration can be dropped at any moment, even if it's not your turn. Yeah, if, if, if he's coming back, I'll just drop it. Yeah, okay, that works. Um, and then as he rushes, um, Tekka... You see the fury in this werewolf's eyes um, as he uh, failed his saving throw against the bloodlust. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're trapped in here with another savage. <laughs> Tekka. Mm hmm. Oh. There's a 13 hit. No. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay. <coughs> I roll four more times. Fourteen to hit. <laughs> no. Hey. Ha! <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, you were keeping an eye on the situation. You saw Casimir coming back, but you noticed something was off about the way he moved. Um, and uh, um, he instant took over. You duck. Uh, Casimir's claws scrape against the wall behind you, and then you leap to the left and uh, as he punches the wall. Um, and you, you take a bit of a step back, and uh, y you see him stare at you and shake his head. Um, and Casimir is going to revert to his halfling form. Yay! All planned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was all of his movement. Uh, that is magic uh, one, spooky werewolf <laughs> bullshit zero. <laughs> his fur falls off of his fur of his form. Uh, claws <laughs> retract back into his hands. Uh, back down to over uh, to to half the size he was a moment ago. Uh, still shaking his head and says, "Shit, shit, shit! Sorry, sorry." Um. That was action, but it's action all of his movement. Uh, Tekka. Oh, okay. What's the play here? Hmm. You lost yourself, but we are back now. Let's recover. Make a plan. <coughs> And uh, Tekka will go back in, and he'll try to recover his rope and blanket. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Those... Ooh, okay, the rope was dangling at the top of the staircase before it collapsed. Uh, well, yes. the blanket, you threw it on the, on the uh, Armabatsu, Armabatsu, um, mm -hmm. after the event. So the blanket is available, the rope will require some searching. Uh, so go ahead and roll an investigation check. Right. Wait, are you like so you're pulling it off of the armabastu? Uh, the I mean, blanket was beside the armabastu. Okay. Yeah, armabastu just kind of threw it off. I remember. Oh, he's doing that. Talix might can ask, uh, what, what, what is her situation? Um, she is big enough uh, that at a glance you can see that she is breathing. Uh, her entire form just uh, uh, moving, her chest inflating and then deflating. She's alive. Uh, Tekka, your rope is nowhere to be found. Dang. Alright, that's it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and I've turned. Incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling with advantage here. <laughs> um, the, the rest of you see arrows flying in through the entranceway, um, and Casimir just, just ducking uh, as he goes, shit, 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 and he's, he's uh, moving up into the, uh, into the tower. Um, yeah. And with 
um, as initiative would loop back to Casimir and he would just run like behind cover, we can be out of initiative for, for the time being. Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm so glad we didn't need those battle plans for now. <laughs> for yeah. now. I'm gonna figure out a way to cover ah. this entrance with anything. I... Yeah, pip, bing, pip, bing, bing, bing. There's like tons of rubble that just fell from mm -hmm. the staircase that collapsed. So Pip will just start grabbing a couple of rocks and tossing them over on this entrance. Um, but we'll also, <laughs> he'll create bonfire again. I love the uh, image right of, at like, the this entrance. 15 foot wide, 20 foot tall, like giant stone arch, and this like child is like <laughs> throwing hand sized stones in the middle. Trying He's to got telekinesis. He can, <laughs> he can psychically push rocks. Yeah. How, how, big, how much weight can you lift with telekinesis? Uh, 10 pounds, I think. Yes. Oh, huh? yeah. Boulders. Oh. <laughs> Might be five. Hold on. Boulder. Yeah, ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> At what point does a rock become a boulder? <laughs> it's you like that one ask. news article that talked about the uh, the small rock the Ooh. size of a large boulder blocking a highway. <laughs> There's a definition. Only... A boulder is defined as any rock larger than 16 inches in diameter or 256 millimeters. No, stop! Only the king of rocks is supposed to have this wisdom. Yeah, yeah you're not the king of rocks. You can't make that I'm call. I'm like 7,000 years old. Who speaks my <laughs> forbidden <laughs> most knowledge? Rocks. <laughs> anyway, we're building the wall. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Build a wall um... and make the tower pay for it. <laughs> <clears throat> um, with what little strength Talix has left with his exhausted self, he can try to... He's going to make sure that he's only going to push rocks big enough that he can hide behind while he's pushing them up. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, lean in and roll in front of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as much as possible, Pip will be towards the side, just using his mind to, to move some of the bigger stones that he can move uh, closer towards the entrance, especially in the middle where uh, where they can't really place stones very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are a few moments uh, uh, where there's close calls. Arrows fly above your heads. Uh, they hit the sides of the entrance or they fly all the way in, all the way in and hit the back of the tower. Um, but with all of you just making sure that you never once expose a single square inch of your skin uh, to the outside, always behind cover, always just tossing these rocks from a safe position, uh, you know that the machine is watching, but you stay safe. There's going to be a certain point where Talos is just like, how many bloody arrows does this thing have? <laughs> Enough. And then he's going to pick one up <laughs> that, that's clattered off the back wall and inspect it and see how it's made. The error? Yeah. Yeah, roll an investigation check. Um, investigation, there we go. Thirteen. Okay. Um... It's clear that the error has been made um, with what this machine could find here. Um, the, 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 the wood matches uh, the, the twigs of the trees uh, in the area, um, and so does the, the rock that's been shaped into the, the, the error head, um, and, and the feather at the end. Um, but it's... It's well made. It's well balanced. Mm, that's what you get. Well, I suppose once he runs out, he'll have to make more. Though, it might work fast. <laughs> I don't think it'll approach. At least not until it thinks we're asleep or something. Maybe we can roll up here, gather our strength, and try to plan our next move.
I think uh, Brooke will go through his backpack and take out like the oil and the potion of light and rope and a few daggers and puts them on the ground just to showcase what he still has. Oh, and a potion of healing. If we're willing to take a few minutes, I can heal all of us. I can do... Well, I don't have much left in me, but I can do a little bit more. Oh, and I have this. Take out the bird. <laughs> Only really do us any good if he leaves, and we'll know if he comes back. So do we wait, or do we attempt to run? It will always be the hunter. We will be the hunter. Well, we um, wait and recuperate. This hunter needs a break. <laughs> uh, guess we should sit down. Try not to run off again. Whoops! I didn't Whoa. think. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Very high. Kazumi <laughs> <laughs> uh, has like that kind of like. Cream, like he's he's cringing, uh, just smiling a little bit, but visibly uncomfortable. Uh, and uh, does rough not... day. <laughs> <laughs> he can't actually say that, but <laughs> <laughs> and does not talk about what just happened. <laughs> he will occasionally glance at Brooke and just give a bit of like an innocent shrug. And uh, he reaches for a water skin and just empties it. Brooke will pick up the potion of healing and walk over to Cass and at least offer it towards him. Um, Casimir picks it up and uh, sort of uh, turns it uh, in his hands uh, and uh, glances up at Alex and says, uh, Well, let's see what your, your friend can do. Uh, if you can patch us up. Alright, so we're just doing long enough for lesser restoration for now? Ten minutes? Yeah. Is okay. that... You mean prayer of healing? That's what I meant, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So Talis is casting the spell, the, um, and the rest of you are like building up this little tiny wall of pebbles. Yeah. Pip's focus for now is definitely trying to get a, at least a somewhat sturdy wall. Okay, so six people can heal twelve. That should cover all of us. That's me full. Yeah, what about the armor mouth? boss, dude? <laughs> Are you healing the armor boss, too? <laughs> I guess I could. I mean, we are trapping ourselves in here with this monkey, but probably shouldn't for right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's gonna wake up eventually, but yeah. Does moving this rubble make it easier to find the rope? <laughs> and the whistle. I would also like to find oh, the yeah. whistle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I will let you roll another investigation check. The two of you working together to find a whistle and a rope, you can have a, a one of you advantage, or both of you can roll. I'll give you advantage, Sid. Okay, okay. Well, Talek's not really uh, Talek is not really an investigator, but <laughs> neither is Pit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a shot. I don't well, think you need a 30 on that. Oh! <laughs> yeah! Wow. Yeah. Our rolls have nice been advantage. better. <laughs> Thank you, Pip. 
<laughs> you retrieve Oh my gosh, I just both. moused over your inspiration dice. Holy crap. Yeah, that's <laughs> the Carter limit. <laughs> I found it. In a ratio. I am very curious really about what Jason spell. did to f to find that Carter limit. I was writing a novel. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, Panoramspiratio. <laughs> uh, the rope is... Uh, uh, why am I saying this? I'm gonna roll. Both the rope and the whistle are in uh, good conditions. They're dirty. Um, but uh, both of them still still usable. The rope still still seems sturdy, and the whistle pip, uh, if if you are uh, gently blow into its back, you can tell that it, it would still make that noise if you were to like blow okay. with all the air you have. Um, in in the meantime, Pip is also going to set down uh, one of the talking dolls next to the Armabastu, the one that was programmed to say. Do you want to keep me when something wakes up next to it? <laughs> so that, that way, at least we'll know if she starts to wake up. <laughs> I can't believe you're it using adults in this situation. It just sits there and stares at its eyes from like a foot away to make sure that it knows when it wakes up. <laughs> That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Okay. It took about 30 minutes to actually locate the rope and the whistle. Uh, what's the next step? What's the progress on the wall looking like? I think we just need to get it enough that we can, like, be covered behind it and not worry about things shooting in. So. It we don't need to get it all the way to the top of the right. edge. After it's thirty, fortifiable. Yeah, after thirty minutes, it would be like you could get it at uh, three feet high. There's one major boulder blocking the way, and then a lot of smaller rocks on the sides. So maybe spend another thirty minutes on it, get it up to six feet at least. You, th you guys think? Um. If you want well, to, the, if you want to do it, that hour wouldn't count as a short rest. And every hour that we're in here is another twenty-five percent chance for that thing to wake up. <laughs> yeah. So, so just three feet is good, and we just sort of you know, <laughs> stay just, low. If you're going across the middle of the room, crouch <laughs> <laughs> or crawl. Great. Um, so Pip would say to Talix in, in, in your head then, um, do you think we're going to be here a while? Do you think maybe I could bring back Squeak? How long do you need? Um, a little over an hour. It's okay, you guys wouldn't have to chant Squeakosh anymore. The talking gall dolls can cover that. Ha 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 ha! Look, I know we're in a kind of perilous situation here with Harip, but uh, how much time do you want to spend preparing before we move on to our next step? Everyone. Uh, Pip just wanted to bring back Squeak. If I could uh, take about an hour or so, a short rest, if you will. Uh, I can get a, a not insignificant amount of my magical power back. Uh, hey, Talix. Okay I can get two yeah. levels worth of spell slots back on a short rest, so I can get two first level slots back or one second level, but I'll probably take the first levels because now I'm out of those uh, with the command, so if I have two of them, I can do that Sanctuary Strap. All right. What, what is it, Pip? Uh, Tekka found the whistle, the the one that was confusing the 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 Mama Armabastu. We might be able to convince her. I mean, maybe we could get her on our side. 
I don't know. I mean, it's it is risky. Well, you can speak to animals and tell us you have some some sort of divine ability to do something. Well, I can try it again. Okay. okay, unless there's anything more pressing, uh, an hour would be best. I think she was just really angry. I mean, if she saw, like, saw with her own eyes and her ears that it was this whistle making the noise, then maybe she'd be more inclined to help us get rid of this thing that's doing this. I can try. I didn't say the word inclined. I don't know that word. <laughs> What else? Just uh, bandage your wounds and gather your strength. If we're going out there, I'm gonna go out there with cover. Uh, how's the Armabastu looking health-wise? Does it look like she's going to be conked out for a while? Is there any way of telling? Oh, you can roll a medicine check. Okay. Uh, a teen. Hip is not sure. She's in a very bad state, but, uh, um, the, the wounds have stopped bleeding, and her breathing is regular. In that case, Pip will head over to one side, maybe under the stairs, and start setting up a circle for Find Familiar. Okay. And he'll, he'll, uh, he'll station it to where the dolls are right next to each other, and when Pip says Squeakashtaraksk, they both just repeat Squeakashtaraksk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This means uh, um, that hour would count as a short rest for everyone but Pip. Yes, I'm fine with that. Okay. Pip would definitely rather have Squeak in this situation. <laughs> All right, Wait, how long ahead. does your little thing take? Ten minutes? An hour and ten minutes. Hour and ten. Oh. Okay. I uh, shouldn't have used the spell. Oh no. <laughs> hey, it helps me. I'm not taking a short rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh go ahead and take your short rest. You've been um You've been, you have locked yourselves in this tower at the end of it for uh, just over an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, can we do something during that rest time or? Um, well, it can be something small around. that doesn't something take up too much strenuous. energy. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, Tekka would, uh, like, either crouch over to Brooke. Brooke. You have been silent too long. I don't understand what this jungle has done to you. But nod if there's something you wish to say. If there is something I wish to say? What, did, what was the ending of that sentence? Nod if there is something you wish to say. Mm. I think he nods. Fine. Then someone with pen, paper, ink. I don't oh. understand this, but there is something. Alex will hand it over. Here, Brooke. What is on your mind? <clears throat> I 
then he writes down can't talk uh, and for Casimir do you have a plan on how to get it And then he gives it back to you and looks at Casimir. Oh. <sighs> I am not sure how to proceed, Brooke. This is not a good position to be in. But I think... I don't know if we can fight it. Uh, I don't know how strong it is. We have yet to lay a single finger on this thing. So... I think the best course of action for us right now is we're uh, wounded and tired and this damned place is getting to my head. Is to find a way to get out of here safely. If only we could lure it somewhere else. Maybe trick it into thinking that we're out of here, that we're going one way while we go another. Uh, that's what I was trying to do earlier. Uh, we just wanted to lure it away from this tower. And I... Uh, if you gave me another half hour or so, I could give it another shot. So we run away. Well, this has to be dealt with. Usually retreat the, is a, does it though? I am amicable with, but... Uh, I mean, I mean, this thing sticks to the jungle, yeah? Seems to. You saw the corpses. Yeah, of people who come into the jungle. They weren't old. Then I'll make sure that they are. I don't follow what you mean, but all the same. People are dying. So you're saying that we run away and altogether we just surrender the jungle to this thing? It doesn't have to be permanent. Once we're back in the city, we can come back with a proper, a oh, larger group number of people for one. And the gnomes were doing that. Back in Urca, that's, that's what they're working on. They're putting together a, 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 a group of people specifically just to hunt this thing down and uh, perhaps we can try again with their help I mean if th there's one thing the gnomes know how to do well is to bring war to someone this is just one machine <coughs> if you all agree on retreat, I'm not going to be the dissent, but I cannot in good conscience vote for it. With all of our diverse skills, abilities, uh, backgrounds, all of all of this, if this is not something that we can do, I shudder at the thought of how many would die with another group. It is rare for such a diverse one to be in one, one place, you know? If they just amass a town militia of sorts, I'm sure they could overwhelm it with numbers, but uh, I'm not a fan of the cannon fodder approach to problem solving. That Shall said, we? which of you would be the cannon father if we were to approach it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should put it to a vote. What's a cannon? It is a gnome thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it is not. Uh, Pip, overhearing this, speaks in Talix's mind. What if... What if we did have reinforcements? And Pip uh, sort of looks over to the Armabastu. Pip, that thing is... Look at it, it's... 
even once it wakes up, it's gonna be a nightmare to deal with, but it's not exactly in prime fighting shape. I'm not talking about just her. What if we could get the animals to uprise against this thing? I mean, surely they can't be happy with what it's doing. I mean, taming one animal is one thing. You want to try to band together a bunch of different animals from the jungle? I've done it before. There was one time when there was one time when the church was going out and and they were starting to chop down trees and I got a bunch of squirrels to throw nuts at them. Well, I mean, if if you could, it might it might do something, but. Are you sure you can do this? Maybe. But... I could use your help. Well, as far as my magic goes, it... It doesn't last long enough to do what you're thinking. It would have to no. be something more... More earnest. You are good with animals. I think we just got off on the wrong foot. I mean, when we start hitting each other, it's really hard to talk then. Okay, well, listen, that thing was trying to eat Talix. I had to do something. Can he read our mind thoughts? Apparently. Oh, I forgot. Um, it's a werewolf. We can probably do all sorts of things. No, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I, I just, I just We've like, done it all the time. I completely yeah, forgot it was. That happens a lot. <laughs> I have forgotten that Pip can't speak sometimes. So. <laughs> so, forgive me. I don't think I've already asked this about the uh, the wall paintings or carvings. I think I was mostly just like trying to get the gist of them before. Um, is there anything about them building machines? Ah, uh, yes. Oh yeah, you did say that, uh, but not nothing like that one, right? It was like... Um, well, Remind me, what, what are the machines like in the, yeah, in the paintings? The, the, the first time you came here, you didn't get like that much time to look at it before the armor buster showed up. So I, I can just give you another uh, rundown. Okay. Um, and this time you've, had, you've been here for an hour and a half. Um, scroll, 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 scroll. Just in case there's like a, a key piece of information on this that we haven't been looking at. Okay, so looking at uh, um, what you can find here depicted on these walls. Uh, um... <laughs> oh my god, what you want? Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> he really wants to be in your office, Jason. <laughs> He's been meowing for the last hour. Okay, I'll let him out. He wins. Alright, two seconds. You win, Bourgeois, you win. Oh, it's only because they're cute. Get away with anything. It do be okay. like that. Okay. So, machines. A lot of it, um, rather than being actual machines, it seems to be more about the, 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 the symbology of it. Uh, cogs and wheels are used to indicate things and, and status. Um, there, is, uh, there is one particular Nahadra uh, that is... What? Uh, what? Uh, we didn't know the Nahadra. What? We didn't know that Orm, these were the Nahadra. Orm wrote it in the last summary, so. <laughs> Wait, really? 
Yeah. I was confirmed that by Orm. I went over my head. No. <laughs> okay. So they started in the Hadra. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I had a brief moment of panic. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought I said it. <laughs> uh, there is one particular na Nahadra um, where that is uh, uh, surrounded by others uh, and uh, is depicted as being uh, above all of them and surrounded by a single large uh, cog that seems to signify that this one is above all the other ones uh, in their society. Uh, but as for like actual machines that they have built, you see a lot of assorted... Uh, uh, a sort of things, uh, machines that uh, uh, are used for farming, uh, machines that are used to to, uh, to serve people in their homes, and uh, uh, there are some that look like them. Um, other part feline, part uh, humanoid creatures that are visibly uh, depicted not as having fur. Uh, but as uh, having these these translucent, translucent plates of uh, metal, and uh, those always come in large groups, and they're always armed. So they appear to be designed as as soldiers, as as guards. And do they so they look like the one who stares. Yeah. Hmm. But I can't really tell if that's an armored person or a com or just a complete construct. Well, I guess I know the one who stares is a construct because the machine. The bird, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And by the way, Orm didn't actually say they were in the, the Nahadra. He said the ruins are from so the era ruins of the Nahadra. from back when the Nahadra ruled it. Yeah. He didn't necessarily say that they were in the Nahadra on the walls. I see. <laughs> well, it's, a right. it's a slip of the tongue from the DM. Matt then. also kind of... Well, I, I read that, that it was implied that this is a Nahadra building. I, I had a feeling, but I wasn't sure. Alright, well, interesting. Which I have no idea what Nahadra is, but... Um, the... The Atara told us about him. Anyway. Oh. Doesn't really help us in the fight, but it's interesting to know. This thing might have been... This thing might have been alive for a long time. No, it doesn't really tell us anything about the way they think, or if they do. But it might explain why he wants to keep the jungle from the, uh, the Atara. Maybe he thinks he's defending it for, you know, People who don't exist here anymore. I don't know what we do with that. Squeak back? Squeak back. Ah, uh. <laughs> uh, with squeak back, uh, um, squeak. <laughs> Squeak knows that uh, he got shot by an arrow. I got ganked, y'all. <laughs> no skill over leveled. This thing can uh, apparently see me when I'm invisible. So there's that piece of information. Yeah, did Squeak see anything that... Well, I guess no, Pip saw everything that Squeak saw. Yeah. Squeak did not see... Squeak uh, was shot from behind. Yeah. Mm. So, uh... What happened? Uh, catch me up, Bruno. Well, uh, oh, we thanks. <laughs> 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 we came after you. So, uh, what's the plan, huh? Talix, no matter our next action, I believe we need Brooke's words. 
he may have some sort of disease of this jungle. Can anything be done to remove it? Like you did with Pip. Um. I've got nothing left to give. I can try over the next day if he don't want me to. But not in the short term, no. Brick reaches for the pen and paper. Yeah. Take a brings it back. Then he writes and gives it to Cass. If we retreat, what would be the distraction? And do we all get out? I assume it would be best for the fastest of us. Uh, presumably Tekka and either Brooke or Casimir. Uh, I can... Uh, I can apply a spell to both of you that uh, has a relatively short duration, but it makes it more difficult for it to, I suppose, perceive you? I'm not entirely sure how it works, but it just does. So perhaps you could try to draw its attention while remaining safe, while the rest of us, uh, I don't know, follow from further behind. I'm quite slow, so if I'm to keep up, I cannot do much else. I can try to stop its sight, so it does not target you. But I don't know how long. Well, of everyone here, I, I'm the most armored, we'll say. And I would honestly prefer that it look at me rather than uh, Alex here or the child. Um, <clears throat> Casimir answering to, to Brooke's written question says, Well, I can be pretty fast. As for who makes it out of here, well, I mean, if I offer to be the bait, will I make it out? Nah, sure. He tilts his head and gives him a raised eyebrow. Oh, come on, you can have faith in me. I'm your teacher. <clears throat> Have I ever let you down? Well, except that one time. Except and that an hour ago. other time. Look, I'm sober for this one. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be fine. Well, my protection magic only lasts for about a minute, so... He writes on the paper the words all of us and then takes the flasks of light and gives it towards or gives it to Tekka I can make use of this is that what you want he nods If there's then, two of us uh, trying to get uh, its attention, uh, it should be good. It can't go after both of us, and all we have to do is circle around. I wonder if it tires out. And sure, surely it's going to run out of errors eventually. Is it a dangerous assumption? It has an entire forest of materials. Well, yeah, but... We did just give it some time. It might have made more, but... 
If we can't tire it out, we could try to make it run out of ammunition. Well, at that point, shouldn't we be attacking? I, I suppose that's an option. It's becoming a pin cushion is not a great uh, tactical strategy. The problem is not how much it has, it is how much it needs. And from what we saw, it does not need very many. Any of you are good with machines? Know anything about how they work? I know how to dismantle them with thunder magic. <laughs> that is about the extent of it. Well, we don't, but now that I think about it, we know someone who does. So that would be a... Well, I suppose if we're running to fight another day, maybe that's an option. Or, uh, I mean, we do have the journal. Perhaps it knows more about the... I'm thinking ten these machines. We have someone who wants to meet us and someone who wants to take, him to, to, take us to him. And this uh, running away plan, I'm not entirely sure how it is different from uh, charging him. If he's too quick for us to catch up, he's definitively too quick for us to escape. It relies on the assumption that he's only interested in protecting this tower. If that was it the case, he would not have allowed us to come in here. Felt to do. Well, yeah, he was off doing something else. That's... Also something we don't know. Maybe he was just gathering materials. Well. We never had that boat, did we? Uh, are we running or fighting? I vote we fight. I'm not confident that we can escape. A hunter does not let its prey simply leave. Brooke nods to that. Take out, takes his hands up. The whole jungle is suffering because of this thing. This mama. That whistle may not have been her child, but she doesn't know where her child is. Okay. So... We're fighting. Okay. Then how do we approach? Same plan. Okay, quickly and uh, with purpose. Distract, and then the rest of us close in, and we have to immobilize it somehow. First, we have to find out where it is. <clears throat> Locate it, immobilize it. And I guess our oh, when it shoots at us, I've noticed its eyes every each time it has shot. Uh, it has these glowing things. So perhaps while it is shooting. At whoever is approaching, you will also know where to go. So okay. I don't believe that location will be a problem past the first shot. If I can get close enough, I... I'm pretty strong. I could perhaps you pin it down. You can grab it and hold it in place long enough for... Uh, I, I don't know about the others, but for me to get close enough, I can uh, lock it down with magic. But I also will take the longest to get there, so... Do 
during this conversation, Pip has been uh, fashioning his effigy in the form of the Armabastu, using her fur and her blood uh, and creating a miniature Armabastu doll. And uh, would use the feature Pinpoint to discover her greatest phobia and also her uh, resistances. Okay. Her greatest fear is to, um, for, <laughs> uh, for her children to be hurt. Her resistances are none. Okay. Uh, Hmm. Kind of a weird thing, but I'll, 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 I'll give you a little extra small thing. Um, you can sense a little bit of magic coursing through her. Hmm. And you feel like this kind of magic would be of the protective kind. Interesting. Um, Pip would say to the others... If, if we want to try and get her on, her on our side, maybe she shouldn't see the people that um, were hitting her. Uh, well, okay, so what do you suppose they go? That is a long-term plan, I think. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't hear not... what you said. <laughs> Sorry, so you're... You're still wanting to do the animals rise up thing? Or at least get this particular one to to be friendly towards us. Okay, well, if she wakes up, I'll... And she comes after us, I will do everything in my power. I've got another chance to try to convince her. To at least... See that we meet her well. Pip As will, it uh, is. keep the. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, Pip will keep the doll behind his back and um, just sort of wait in front of the arm of Bastu until she either wakes up or we decide we're going to leave. As it is now nearing the second hour that you've been holed up in this tower, the giant ape begins to stir. Pip, your your doll, speaks. And everyone's attention uh, snaps towards the center of the room. Might be a good time to leave. Uh, Fine, I will make an approach. Where do I go? Upstairs? Outside? No, not outside. Upstairs. But not too far. Upstairs, then outside? What? I, I didn't hear what you said, Jason. I, I, I'm not actually sure. Are, are, so are we not going outside? Uh, I thought we were going to rush this thing. Though. I don't know. Pip said that uh, the people who hate the armor buster should not be visible. To her no, I, I thought we were up. going after the. What, what are we doing, guys? Are we going after the one who stares? I, I was just gonna talk to the Armabastu first. Okay. I saw, I saw we decided on going after the one who stares, but if the ape wakes up. Right. That's what I thought. Is that we're we're preparing to go after this thing, and in the event that the ape wakes up beforehand, then we'll try this pip thing. But like, we're not gonna wait around to talk to the ape. Well, but it seems like the ape is waking up. Okay. So. uh I will say this, Pip has the doll behind him, and if the ape makes like makes like a very aggressive move towards one of us, like definitely going to hurt us, then Pip will prick the doll and send her unconscious again. Um, but right now, Pip is seeing her waking up and is just going to very softly say, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh. And that means uh, to her, Please stay calm. We're not going to hurt you. We just want to talk. You're safe here. You're safe. 
Uh, as she begins uh, to uh, turn her head from side to side, um, eyes, one of them swollen and uh, swollen shut, and the other squinting and uh, reddened. Um, her, her, um, hmm. Well, go ahead and roll an animal handling check, and let's go from there. Okay. I'm going to use inspiration. <laughs> okay. So it's just 13. 13 then. Um, her massive form quivers. Uh, there is uh, the sound that, es that escapes from her throat is one of pain and confusion. As she she doesn't stand up, it's more like she drags herself a little bit away from you. I know you're hurting. I'm so sorry. We really didn't want to hurt you. I know you were just looking for your baby. I know, but Where I promise he? you, your baby is not here. Can I show you something? Crazy. Listen, that machine out there, he creates these things, these things that make noise. Can I show you? And Pip will pull out the whistle. Um, I yeah, as Pip reaches for something, she pulls herself a bit further away. I just want to show you. The machine makes these things, and when... When you blow into them, it makes a noise. Promise you won't be afraid. It's not your child. It's just noise. And Pip will just blow into it softly. The armor bus to shivers uh, when uh, when she hears the noise, and you see her um, uh, pulling herself to on all fours and looking around, left and right, and smelling the air. She moves a little bit closer to you, lowers See? her head, sniffs the item that you have in your hands. Roll a persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> oh. Good <laughs> work. Um, she is so big that when she inhales, uh, your hair lifts up towards her. Um, there is, for, for anyone else, uh, uh, being this close to a creature so big would be terrifying, but, um, Pip has always been more at ease around animals than people. Um, and you stand your ground. Um, she asks for you to do it again, and you do so. And she looks around again, and she, uh, she drags herself a few steps up the staircase, the rest uh, above here um, crouching down as this happens. Uh, she, she, she looks up, and then back down, looks under the stairs, looks at the you, others that are nearby, and every time her attention goes back to, to Pip. Uh, <laughs> Just blow into it. We'll hand it out to her. <laughs> <laughs> um, she tries to use it. It's a little bit too small for for her to be able to like just put her lips to the tiny, tiny hole in the back of the whistle. Um, but as as she holds it and she gives it a try, uh, she uh, you you can tell that she is angry and she just uh, um, she closes her fist around it and crushes it and. Uh, uh, Let's go of the wooden fragments that hit the ground, and and she says, "Sounds like my child, but it's not." Me and... Right. Why? Me... How? This this machine. It's it's trying to trick you. It's trying to. That's what it does. It traps people. It traps. 
animals and my pack and I, Trick. we don't know where your child is, but Traps. we'd like to help you. Traps are bad. Yes. I think we could help each other. We... This thing, it keeps hurting animals like you and people like us. Maybe we could help you find your your child and maybe just maybe if we get enough of you we could get rid of this thing once and for all <sighs> okay help find child pit nuts Maybe it's the one that went to the watering hole. Is that where they were going? There were a... Uh, maybe. There were a bunch of them there. Mm. Uh, you guys redirected them towards where you plucked all those fruits. Oh, well, that's right. Uh, you asked the... Uh, they told you where you could find water. Um, okay. Uh, the, the armor boss okay. looks at the rest of you and... Does not attack you? Oh god. It's Kamer. Okay. <gasps> oh... My hands were shaking. Oh, that was great. She has <laughs> one hit point. Can we Perfect. help her in any way? I, I think we can't really fight right now. But if she gotta... steps on a Lego, she's down <laughs> again. <laughs> I think we need to just go back to what we were doing. Go out there. Yeah. But uh yeah, if we if we help her find her child, we might be able to wrangle some more up. Fight this thing. All right, so do we have to take down our wall? <laughs> I mean, it's only three feet high, so we'll probably just go over it. We didn't make, like, an obstruction so much as, like, something for us to yeah. go across the room without just being shot. Speaking of, the Good. monkey's not being shot, right? It's not. That's good. Okay. Okay. So... It was supposed to be Tekka and Cass out front, right? Yeah. So Tekka, the... Tekka heads back down the stairs, and you've seen, like, he's tied together uh, the blankets and the tarp uh, to the rope, and he's covered them in this uh, glowing substance that Rook gave him. You have to drink it and then cast the spell. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, such that this material is glowing now. <laughs> um, so I, I have bad news. Um, okay. Do you need to know the can hurt for it to work? Uh, it doesn't it last makes you long. Long. <laughs> Wait, how long does it last? I know that's what the can last. <laughs> when. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brook hands the potion to Tekka, right? Uh -huh. um, and Brook has a chance to like write down on paper uh, any instructions about this potion. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I don't have any. <laughs> That's my cantrip. <laughs> I don't know what you like it with that. 
Frank? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. It says duration one hour. Cool evocation. What? You touch one object that is not larger than 10 feet. That's exactly what I'm writing on that. <laughs> <laughs> I posted it in Discord. <laughs> that is what what is a dimension. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, take a Bru Brook point? gives you a potion and there's instructions uh -huh. on touching an object, right? Okay, okay. Okay. What do you do with the, with the Atle bottle? Um, okay, so does Tech have to drink it and touch something? Yeah, I'm assuming so. At least that's how I understood it. Okay. You get uh, to, you you get once you drink it, you get to cast a light cantrip. Got it. Am I right, uh, Winter? <laughs> we'll find out. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well... Yeah, I, I, if that, if tech has been instructed by Brook on how that works then he will not have casted it yet but we'll have tied together yeah tarp and blankets to this rope in like a, a big line mm -hmm. and then he stands in front of um, this little barricade crouch down and just wait for casimir i guess okay you hear the heavy breathing of the giant tape behind you um Every once in a while you look behind you nervously, but she is uh, um, not bothering you. Casimir is very concerned. Um, basically looking behind himself more than he's looking forward. Ironic. We should move. Brook, are you are you ready? Thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Is Brook gonna um. be like closer to the door? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Actually, that's right. what. That's, oh, oh, wait, wait, I'm rolling down. <laughs> 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 that's Sorry. what you meant. Okay, what? <laughs> Poor Brook. All right. Okay. And just to make sure I play Casimir correctly, <laughs> would you want me? What do you want him to do? You know what? We haven't figured out where that thing is. Just realized. Yeah. No, we're not going to know until it shoots. Oh, okay. So you'd like for I him to they, run? I up? guess they need to split up and. Yeah, I would say both of them go out first, and then they wait till they get shot, and then they run at them with the blanket and the light. Oh, yeah. sure. But we'll, right? we, need to, we basically need to run out right behind them. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, okay. I think so. Okay. All right. <clears throat> then... Um, Kazumi waits for Sinu, and uh, when everyone is ready, he and Tekka jump over the, bar the barricade and run out. At the end of the steps, they look to the left, they look to the right, both of them very light on their feet, ready to, uh, to duck, to dodge at any sign of movement. Yeah. And uh, then Casimir is shot. Oh. No. Um and he and Tekka uh as an error uh ends up into one of his legs. Uh you see the glowing uh red dots of light uh in this direction. Uh yeah. Uh Tekka will have uh enchanted the tarp with this glowing. Ah, and... uh, well, hold on. Oh. Did you drink the potion? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, did it while, like, right leaping, leaping the barricade. Yeah, sure. Okay, when you drink the potion, um, uh, you'll notice that there is light coming out of your mouth. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> 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 it's not meant to be ingested, it's meant to nice. be dumped onto something. <laughs> your whole digestive tract is radiant right now. Well, keep your mouth open, Tekka. <laughs> <laughs> How does it taste? <laughs> I um, can't believe that Tekka's first instinct was to cover it, that Brooke's instructions is to do the opposite. Oh my god. <laughs> Very fizzy and uh, like lemon. It's oh, nice. <laughs> oh, well, they made it surprisingly palatable. <laughs> yeah. That's like flavor and everything. That's the thing. It's meant. You have to drink it. <laughs> if you pour it on something, it doesn't work. So like, let's go. I'm Dennis smart. got it right. <laughs> 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 Did you happen to go to the brewery of one, uh, a call, whatever her last name was? <laughs> <laughs> if it was a call, Glitter, then yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, hold on to that image. Keep your mouth open. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Casimir. I'm a fire in my laser. <laughs> 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 Okay, uh... <clears throat> Alright. Uh... And uh, we can now... Enter initiative again. Uh, you guys were well, gonna run out, like, uh, position yeah, yourselves... As soon as Zero got shot, uh, Talix kinda yelled for everyone to go. I don't know if they're going... Yeah. You can yeah. all you can all take your movement right now, and then we'll enter initiative and start with Casimir. I totally uh, we can be rolled um, initiative. Can I oh, yes, you just three feet over the wall? Can I put sanctuary on? on yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, any if you want to uh, any preparation <laughs> no. beforehand. Yeah, I mean, that was like the plan before, but then it's like yeah. when and one of them got shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One also got shot, and the other one is <laughs> shooting lasers out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. perfect okay, to me. Yeah, I'm gonna put sanctuary on tech. My initiative is no better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god, all my rolls have been oh, bad. This is my first roll of the session. There's no dice towers anymore. Neat. They're gone, they've been banished. Um. So, hearing the shot fired outside, Pip would definitely say to uh, the Armabastu, You're too hurt for a fight right now. Stay inside, okay? Uh, the Armabastu stays back? Oof. Yeah. Tekka definitely shocked oh by what this trick is doing. It's just like caught off guard. <laughs> uh... This is not good. Well, we're we're gonna be fine. What was the what was the consensus on moving over the thing? I don't I don't know. We hadn't heard. Oh, uh, just an extra five foot. Okay, oh. then I am right where I should be. I am. Oh. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I stopped right before it. 30 feet is on the wall. We'll be on the wall. I'll be on the wall. Just sit on difficult the wall. terrain, is it is it stepping into or stepping out of? Into. It's stepping into, right? Mm-hmm. So it costs you the extra five feet to move onto it, but it won't cost you anything extra to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So next turn, you'll have your full move. Yeah. Um, what did you cast on Deco? Sanctuary. That's it's a uh, bonus state. action, 30-foot range. Do we have it? What? I don't think we oh, do. I just always use Shield of Faith, but yeah. 
Oh, a little marker. No. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like there's room on that top row for a for a couple, and one row, one on the bottom row. Maybe jam that one in there. Find one, I guess. Wait, I wasn't supposed to add. I did more damage to Casimir than I was supposed to. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, and same with Talix. <laughs> <laughs> So we are going to be starting with uh, Brook. Oh, um, you guys are positioned uh, uh, how you should. Everything is good. We can go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've taken my first movement. Okay. Uh. And Talix uh, has his shield in front of him. Yeah. I. I mean. The Pontifex has his shield too. This. I can't, oh, good, 30, I can't move 30 feet and then hold my bonus action or my my action for dash, right? Uh, yeah. So can I do that? Oh, okay. uh, that's an action, sure. Yeah. Yep. You're holding it uh, based on? Based on them running? Yeah, it. So I can follow it. Yeah, I just don't want to get ahead. Sure. Well, um... Casimir is going to rush in that direction right now. Um, and as he does, he's going to lean forward until he's on all fours uh, and he has uh, uh, taken his uh, wolf-like form once again. Uh, uh. I wish I could be a bear. <laughs> Man, D and D used to be so simple. All it takes is two druid levels. Yeah, <laughs> not too late to <laughs> get a third class. I mean, you meet the requirement. It's in character. <laughs> what a... metal does he use? It's a bonus action for Casimir to transform, and he'll take his action to to um, dodge. Uh, Brook, you can take your reaction to go with him. Oh, I did it. I was muted, sorry. And... Uh... Wait, how much is this? <laughs> ah, yeah. One of two arrows uh, strikes Casimir again. Uh, when uh, Brooke, you're so close now that you can see that uh, um, Casimir pretty much shrugs it off. Um, it hit him even with the dodge action? You see that uh, mm -hmm. um, he just pulls... The, 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 the air out of himself and tosses it on the ground and keeps on going. Squeak? Squeak! Uh, Wait, sorry to interrupt. I just remembered how Sanctuary actually works. Can I rescind casting, like, ever? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this, Sanctuary does the exact opposite of what we're wanting it to do. That, yeah, good point. Good yeah, point. Sanctuary makes it where if it fails to save on tech, it oh, has to shoot someone else. someone else. But yeah, yeah, that is the <laughs> opposite of what I want. Pontifex is not as dumb as Matt. <laughs> uh, you can take it back. Would you have wanted to cast something different? Uh, uh, no. Okay. Yeah, not, not for now. I don't want I don't to mess things up too much. It's time for Squeak's <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> Squeak's Revenge consists of uh, currently hiding in Pip's shawl. And... Uh, <laughs> He's gonna stay there for a while. Mm-hmm. Talix? Uh, because... Oh. Yeah? Because being invisible doesn't help. Okay, yeah. Right. Talix. Uh, 
So 30 to be here. Excuse me, tackle. <laughs> You're actually ahead of me. It's just initiative makes things weird. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming that they're running towards mm -hmm. the one who stares. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to be there. Okay. Want effects? Uh, I'm going to move an action deck. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cast uh, uh, Sanctuary on Talix instead. Oh. Normally I do that on myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have the spell slots. No, I don't. I don't have a yeah, single spell I got, slot. <laughs> I got two spell slots back that were explicitly stated to be used for Sanctuary. So, and it was, he said on, on Talix, uh, or I guess the people that to, to protect would be Talix and the child, inferring Pip. <laughs> okay. Spoiler, you're up next. <laughs> Pip. Because this isn't concentration. Pip is going to move, action dash, up here, and then bonus action, help the professor down off of the log with telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> That's it. Teka. <laughs> Look uh, here, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I consent, but... Uh, Yeesh. Yes, I think Tekka will move forward. Can we get an indication of, like, whereabouts we've seen those eyes? Or have, have any of us seen it aside from Casimir? Uh, Just an idea for distance. And... Let's pick this spot. Uh, okay. Brooke and Tekka were both out here when Casimir got shot again. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. so, what I would like Tekka to do is to swing like this uh, connection of blankets and tarps, like um, something from a Chinese dragon dance, uh, to sort of obscure the view. But can I can that be like holding a move to move alongside everyone else, or is that just the action of like trying to obscure uh, the one who stares his view? I don't know. So is it basically like you're just swinging it around in a disorienting way as you run? Kind of yeah, it, yeah. Tega's just trying to make sure that they. And you want to be not... ahead of the group. Yeah, that's the intent. Okay. Um, so let's say it's an action to obscure everyone. So you can move uh, every round up to your speed, but you can't dash. Um, okay. But with everyone being uh, working together, uh, they can like specifically stay behind you from now on. Okay. Then that's what I think it wants to do. Okay. So uh, <coughs> let's do a small thing. Um, I'm gonna take a moment. Uh, I, I'd ask for everyone to grab your color and draw a, a little circle on the spot you're at, and I will swap out the map. The, mm. uh, the circle, the circle is so that we can keep track of where everyone is, uh, yeah, but we'll have to move the minis away. Yeah, and I think yeah. that should work. I have Casimir here. <coughs> Okay, um, let's make sure that this is on the ground. Uh, and let's see if that works. Maybe I should save. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think we fed the cats, have we? Oh my god! Alright, while you're doing that, I'm gonna get up. Yeah, okay. Uh, we can call this actually a five minute break. Uh, I don't know, we've been playing for two hours. Sure. Yeah. I'll just finish setting this up and you guys can stretch your legs. Okay. It is very nice. <laughs> 
Uh, then let's, let's resume with Brooke. It's a steaming ice cream. Yeah. Ah. Well... I will walk behind Tekka. And then keep my dash action for when Tekka moves forward. Okay. Casimir will also be holding back, um, and he will be scratching one of his arms. As a bonus action, which does this much damage. Is he a fleas? Huh? Is he a fleas? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not quite. Oh my god, I have pumpkin on my lap now, which is wonderful, but I can no longer hold my <laughs> whiteboard. But it's okay. She's cute, so she can get away with it. Alright, here we are. <laughs> Does that cantrip us damage scale? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Soon. Soon. <laughs> Soon. At level 13. Okay. Tekka. Mm -hmm. At disadvantage, I have a 14 to hit. It's not hit. Casimir. At disadvantage. Also has a 14, which misses. Um, so as you're as you're waving this blank around, almost like a flag, uh, and you're using your your whole body to to guide its movement back and forth in front of the group. Uh, choo -choo, two arrows, one flies past it, the other ends up into the blanket, and it's sort of like stuck there now. Um, <clears throat> You see the figure of the one who stares, um, covered in uh, mud and in leaves. Um, but you spot those eyes, and for a moment you see his entire body moving. Um, you see him uh, uh, move uh, more towards your left, and then disappear into the thick foliage. Squeak. <laughs> okay. Um, Squeak is going to hold his move action to fly um, uh, until till Pip's turn. So he's just staying put right now. Okay. Talix? Yeah, again, just, yeah, I think we're all moving up with Tekka. Pontifex too? I'm just keeping an eye out. Uh, Pontifex is gonna move up from... Uh, to here, and then I'm going to Sanctuary Pip. Uh, wait, one second. Uh, and then I will, uh, oh. ready my action to dash, um, oh. whenever oh. Oh. the others do. <laughs> have to sort of yeet him off. You're holding what? Your action to uh, dash? I'm, yeah, readying and an, a dash action for once. Okay. Once Tekka and uh, once Tekka and Casimir Tekka goes next, so I think after Casimir moves up, that's when I'll move. Pip. <clears throat> uh, Pip is going to move up to behind this tree uh, and will bonus action cast magic stone improved magic stone uh, creating three magic stones in his pouch and will pull them out and uh, hand them to Squeak who is going to use his held move action to uh, fly all the way up on this tree into the sky okay do you need the little uh, the height markers, these ones. Uh, yeah, I don't, know if, I don't know if this tree has collision at the top. 
It does. It does? Oh, hey, yeah, yeah. there it is. It's probably further than 40 feet, uh, but... Oh, well, it's about right. Oh, roughly. Yeah. Well, we know okay. it's 40. Tekka! Yeah. Uh, Tekka. That, was, that was just Pip's bonus action. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, Pip's going to take the... Or Pip will... Yeah, Pip will hold the move action, too. Okay. Tekka, everyone is ready to follow you. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> let's, let's get this train rolling. Uh, Tekka continues to swing his dragon dance as he moves towards the swooshing of the one who stands. We basically formed a marching band. Ah, yeah. <laughs> our, our, flag there. <coughs> our flag twirler. E okay, got it. <laughs> Anything else from Tekka? I mean, yeah, we told we said that one of the actions every turn was to do the swing and right. So. Mm -hmm. Anything That's with a bonus action? No, nothing that would help. I think. All right, Brook. Uh, well. I'm holding my... Are there any more... Uh, since we've been on this map, no arrows have been fired yet, right? Uh, two of the arrows a have couple. been fired. Both missed. Do we have, like, a rough estimate of how far away it is? Uh, you uh, have been moving in uh, this direction. It was over here first, and you saw, you saw it moving. It was over here first, uh, and you okay. saw it moving this way. All right, I'm holding my dash action. The end. Casimir. Mm -hmm. Kazim is also holding his movement. It's one, um, Tekka. That is a an eleven to hit. That is not hit. And this is a twenty-seven to hit. Oh. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> now, um, because. This was all right. So uh, I'm gonna put this into words, into the mechanics of what's going on right now. So the one who stares is hidden, which gives him advantage on the strikes, uh, and is beating all of your passive perceptions right now. Um, Simultaneously, Tekka is imposing disadvantage on these strikes, so they are straight rolls. Um, with one missing and one hitting him. As long as... Okay, yeah, gets the damage. So, Tekka, mm -hmm. you take... Plus this much. 26 piercing damage. Was that from a single arrow? Yes. 
Tekka <gasps> deflects the arrow with his quarter staff. Oh? Yeah, monk deflector. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, big roll. Oh, that's yeah. a big roll. So you've reduced the damage? Yeah. That reduces the damage by 18. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, You take D, eight. Is it D10 or D12? Did you roll the biggest number? Uh, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a D10. Oh my D10 God. plus monk level plus deck. So that's the Ooh. highest number possible. Hell yeah. What the heck, attack? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Thank> God. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh and as your tis close, um um you are uh, uh 10 20 you're 30 feet away from where you now see the eyes glowing. Uh now forgive the the 3D model not being wholly accurate, but it was really difficult to find uh, a um oh. A man sandwich on uh, on cat bread. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you you like to use a little bit of your imagination. The closest I could find I could find was a lion centaur. Uh, nice. With a flaming yeah, sword. That's great. <laughs> that's great. Uh, he doesn't have a shield. He doesn't have a sword. Um, I want to pet him. No. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the opposite of what we want. My blade. <laughs> it's very like wavy, inviting man for yeah. sure. I want to pet his guts. What shampoo do you use? It doesn't have a mean. So you all see the movement uh, uh, as he, uh, let's say, 25 year. Uh, oh, I can't see because the trees are in the way. Um, actually, behind here is sufficient. And as a bonus action, he hides. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have. Where's his health? Okay, I'm still beating all of the passives. Wait! Not really? Casimir's! Because <gasps> all of you have 13s and 12s. Ah, uh, 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 Casimir sees him. Power gamers, where no one took proficiency. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to know that I do have proficiency in perception, and I don't have a measly spell for so well, More than half the group are wizard, like are not wizard, are wisdom people. And <laughs> none of us have proficiency. I do. <laughs> You're not wisdom, dude. Can anyone see that okay. number? We have two clerics and a monk. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers in the tree. What numbers in the tree? Oh! <laughs> oh no! No! I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring him to the ground first. I am, okay, I have my camera in. Oh, five. Five? five? Okay, <laughs> what's this? <laughs> oh, oh, oh shit. Uh, 60. 55. 60. 60. Okay, what's that? 45. What's this? 30. Am I winning yet? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is this your card? <laughs> Golf. Low numbers are good. <laughs> What's this? 65. What's this? 60. <laughs> 60. Okay, okay. Great. What's this? 90. Shoot. Okay. Oh, 90 sounds good. He'll go here. 65. Okay. So he's, he's action dashing. He's staying, uh, staying above the tree cover as much as possible. He's in this tree now. Oh, uh, yeah, there he is. Um, and he's just got uh, the magic stones in his hand waiting for a shot. Uh, is That's he holding it. his attack? Uh, he doesn't have to, Pip. Oh, right, right, right. Can, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, Calix. Uh, the marching band is visibly slower than uh, the one who stares... Uh, um, Movement. Talix is not going to be the first one to break formation. He's staying behind Tekka. Okay, holding a movement. Holding movement. Yeah. Pontifex. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna move. Uh. To, oh, it went over to the right, didn't it? Yes. Uh, slightly. It's center-ish of the map. 
Okay, I guess I'm gonna... Where this blue circle thing is, yeah? Like, roughly? There's a blue circle thing? Yeah. You drew a circle where you used to be. Uh, yeah, it's no longer visible on my uh, side. Um, mm. Oh, okay, it's gone. Um, okay. Yeah, I erased it. Good. Uh, is there... Uh, we did see it move pretty far back, right? Yeah. We, we last saw him here. Mm -hmm. Where my hand is. Is that within 90 feet of me? Yes. Uh, is it like maybe within 90 or is like the back it's end within the last within place? Because I don't want to yeah, lose last this. Last place we saw him was definitely within 90. Yeah, it's 80 feet away. Then uh, I'm going to uh, hold my action. I'm going to hold Tasha's mind whip at second level. Okay. For the moment For when you whenever, see it? Yeah, whenever the moment he comes visible. Okay. Dip. Uh, it's your turn. Okay, um, Pip will also not break the Congo line. He'll help, uh, hold his move action. <laughs> and I think that's it. People who have been watching Winter's Twitch channel for 10 years will get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Only for the oldest fans. Tekka. Uh, yeah, so Tekka will use... Mm, can we use an action to, like, perceive things? Like, can, can Tekka use an action to try to look for the one who's there? Is that... You gotta be yes. active perception instead of passive. Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so he will use Step of the Wind to dash as a bon uh, bonus action. Move maybe around there. Doesn't want to abandon the crew still obscure uh and then uh yeah try to investigate try to figure out where this thing is go uh, ahead and roll your check is that perception or yes. got it oh Ooh. uh it just so happens that you are 10 feet away from it and <laughs> Um, <clears throat> open your mouth, Tech. open your mouth. <laughs> Lighthouse and <laughs> bah. <laughs> Tekka, you mm -hmm. stand perfectly still, and everything around you in this jungle is also perfectly still. It's quiet. You don't hear any bird chirping, just the sound of everyone behind you stepping up, uh, uh, keeping, keeping up with you. And. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, uh, as you're looking ahead in despite his camouflage you spot it and it seems like the machine is having a moment of not hesitation but like it's taking very careful aim um, it feels like uh, an almost uh, almost human thing uh, you can tell that it's uh, it's uh, judging the the speed and direction of the wind and uh, um, its hands are shaking slightly hmm. uh, some of the people the back here need you... to move up as well, right? Yes, all of you were holding your movement. movement. You can go ahead and, uh, and move. Uh, Broken. Pontifex cats. still hasn't seen uh, the machine. Sure. Uh, so it's. Yeah, Brook, moving? you should definitely move before it's your turn. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. you were holding movement. Third yeah. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. That's my turn. And Brooke. Can I hold a bonus? Nope. Ooh. All right. Mm. Third. D. Oh, I can go. Huh? 
<laughs> All right. Guess I'm holding my dash action. Okay. Uh, you see Casimir sniffing the air and uh, um, shaking it, uh, his head in frustration. He moves forward a little bit, keeping up with Tekka. And then he freezes, and then he leaps. This is, uh, 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 table. Okay. Um. Table! Uh, all right. So, Casimir lands two strikes. Where am I? There they are. Ah, uh, and as uh, the uh, as Casimir. <clears throat> uh, leaps here, uh, Pontifex, you can see, uh, you can see this happening and you have a good shot on the one of the stairs. I'll rip it. Uh, DC 16 intelligence save. DC 16 intelligence. Yep. Nine. <laughs> That's a failure. He's going to take some uh, and I'm changing the damage type uh, to let's do lightning. Sure, uh, 11 points of lightning damage. Um, it can't take a reaction until the end of its next turn and it has to choose on its next turn to move, take an action or a bonus action. 11. Hey, the one stairs just took damage. Lightning works. Wait, did Casimir not hit it? Yes. It, it took oh, damage that... from both of them. Okay, I thought you were saying like, sorry, that was sorry. the first time. I was like, wait, it, what? No, no. This round is the first time he has taken damage. Yeah. Wizard Taser comes blasting past you all 90 feet in the back. <laughs> None of us have ranged weapons. We've and only he just not caught up to the thing. Pip is holding several ranged weapons that he offered to you. Oh, well, no, he didn't. Not in character. Rocks, anyway. sorry. Oh, okay. He doesn't know that <laughs> Talix doesn't have anything right now. <laughs> I have to choose between action, move, bonus action, action and move action or bonus yeah? action. Yo, just one of those. Wow. Yep. Here, I'll <laughs> just post it. Uh, right, right, right. Stand still while we get you. <laughs> Carter limit. Um, uh, on a success, it takes half damage and suffers none of the... F yeah, but it's fine, it's fine. I... I... Hmm. What to do? There you go. That's better. Okay. Uh, the one who stares is going... Um, it's not going to... A short spear can be he held with just one hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a regular spear is a one-handed weapon that you can two-hand with the versatile trait. But by default, it's one-handed. Okay. Uh, so, with the hand that usually would hold uh, one of the arrows, uh, uh, it's going to get... W uh, its spear out and try to stab Casimir. Uh, only one of them hits. And Casimir resists the damage. And it is very little damage. It is eight halved to four. 
Casimir doesn't even notice it. Because the one who stares doesn't get the extra damage to this one. All right. Um, the machine visibly slowing down uh, after being hit by Pontifex's spell. Um, tries to fight back against Casimir, and the two of them uh, roughly equal in, in size and, uh, and height, uh, but Casimir having the clear upper hand, uh, Casimir's claws just <clears throat> tearing off chunks of metal from this thing. Squeak? Uh, Squeak sees a moment and is going to take advantage of it. Uh, oh, I can't see. <laughs> anyway. He will action dash and land right, on 50. the one who stares back, <laughs> and will will uh, sort of whisper in his feline ear, "There's something you should know about me. I really don't like cats." <laughs> <laughs> and is and is going to wait for Pip's command. Okay. <laughs> and now Alex. don't move while I wait for someone to tell me what to do to you. <laughs> 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 Talies. All right. I'm running. Oh wow! I can actually get up there. Oh. Uh, too too far 40, in. I should 45, be able. 50, 55. Okay, I can dash right up here. Shields at the ready. I'm not striking yet because I ran too far. But I'll be ready for next turn. That's it. Okay, Pontifex. Uh, I'm going to move first a little bit to the. How far is that? 65. 65? 60? 60. Mm hmm. Okay. Let me see what I can do with 60. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to. Wait, Here, that's a let me multiple fix this. target. This one of stairs is medium sized. Uh, oh, so it will be oh. like this. Oh. oh, what? Oh, that's nothing. That isn't scary. It's the 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 base is bigger, but it's like, like a little pony. We're gonna <laughs> take him down, and then like we'll hear rumbling and be like, "I am the real one who stares." <laughs> it's just like it, a it's mom shows up. <laughs> 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 hmm. And then it breathes fire on all of us. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to cast. Oh, you guys would be five foot. Hold on. Let me make sure how this works. Uh, it hits one. Five foot. And it increases that ends its turn with. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I, I'm going to cast Flaming Sphere. Oh. And is this a space? Mm, it is an occupied space. Uh. Okay, it has to be an unoccupied space. Uh, then yeah, we'll do the we'll do the the Casimir side of or wait yeah we'll do the Casimir side. Uh, I'm gonna put you it could, here. Can you run any further? Can you like? Can you go you farther did. so you can reach behind it? Uh, no, it is a sixty foot range. But you you couldn't have moved any further. Mm -mm, that's all twenty feet of my movement. Oh, okay. The, the I only have twenty yeah. foot speed. So this is this is I think fifty five away from me. Um, so I'm gonna put it here. Uh, it's my action to cast it, and then bonus action to ram it uh, into the thing. This is cast at third level because it's the only slots I have. Okay. Uh, so it needs to make a DC sixteen Dex save. Uh, and this is uh, this is thunder damage. <laughs> this is the the um, wub wub dubstep, dubstep orb. Thirty one. Yeah. So it succeeds, but it takes what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What's that? No, it's uh, it's twenty-three. 
23. <laughs> that still succeeds. Uh, it still takes half. Um, so this is 3d6. <laughs> I believed you. <laughs> uh, so 12, so six, six points of thunder damage. Got it. Uh, and then the professor is going to shout uh, from the back. Uh, uh, hold it still on the orb. <laughs> Casimir, you said you were strong. Grab it. Hold it on the orb. All right. Yeah, just keep standing next to that ball of death for a little bit. Well, no, he can move. Yeah. Fip. Yeah. Like right, Casimir so... here, Batty here. <laughs> Would work. Whatever. Pip is going to, to uh, wave his doll in front of him and start chanting magic and is going to connect that magic to his mental connection with Squeak. And through that connection, he can cast the touch spell, bestow curse through Squeak on the one who stares. Okay. So that's a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Let me read the text of bestow curse really quickly. <laughs> There's a lot of text. You touch a creature, that creature must succeed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. All right, I just wanted to make sure it wouldn't resist it, but it doesn't. Um, Wisdom saving throw? Yep. Oh. It is good at wisdom saving throws, but I still rolled a 10 total. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, um, then that is going to, uh, so you'll see like, rust start to sort of form on its joints and uh this is going to give it disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving throws and uh yeah it would just make sure that's apparent to everyone <laughs> uh sort of repeating what uh Pontifex said uh lock him down lock him down Which comes through squeak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that everything from Pip? Uh, yes. Well, uh? is is being next to that dubstep orb bad for Casimir? Like, uh, ending your turn within five feet of it uh, makes you do the save. Pip will move a bit closer and use his bonus action to push Casimir five feet away if that, if he accepts. Okay. Oh. Yes. Uh, Casimir is, uh, is willing. All right. And that's it. Casimir feels a push, but he is um, not hurt enough to have lost uh, uh, his, his, the logical human side of him. Uh, he knows what this is and he just lets himself be moved. Tekka? All right, this is going to be a long turn. I apologize in advance. Okay, um, exciting. Does he get a, a flanking bonus from? Yes. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah. Okay, and, and that's advantage. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, this is going to be a lot of rolls incoming. So here we go. Mm -hmm. We um, need a lot of rolls. That's good. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Tekka is no longer swinging around the black. It's just. Like, okay. Yeah, they've been dropped on the way. Yeah. He is still flash banging him with his mouth, though. True. Yeah. <laughs> I guess just flash. No, no bang. A 15. Uh, 15 to hit? Yeah. It hits. All right. Ooh. Nice. Here comes first damage. Uh, plus more. Uh, I will need a strength saving throw. Which <laughs> is a disadvantage because it's cursed. So, 10. Okay. Uh, the one who stares is disarmed. 
Ah, does that apply to one weapon or two? Like all of them. I mean, does it specify? What weapon they're holding, I would say. I, I don't right, know. Right, because it, it has like and one bow one? currently in the offhand and like the, the spear in the other. Yeah, yeah it's just one. one. If you disarm a dual wielding target, you just uh, you pick which one. Okay, which one would you like? Would you like it to lose? Oh, gosh, uh, any suggestions from the party? I don't think you can use the bow too well while we're all here. I think the spear. Yeah, is I would probably get rid of the spear. Mm -hmm. The plan is to not allow him to make any more range attacks. Simultaneously, you've seen that this machine is way deadlier with a bow when it can hit. Yeah, right. That's, so that's true. true. But I think we have to plan on not letting it get away. Okay, yeah, okay. Then, then we take the I gamble. Guess it can uh, still use the bow point blank. It just has disadvantage. Mm -hmm. But it seems to have a pretty massive two hit bonus. Sharpshooter. Uh, <laughs> so which, which he, one would it be? He stabbed Casimir with the spear, and Casimir hardly cared, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm taking the gamble on disarming the bow. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice. That's probably what I would do, actually. Uh, and then we continue with the attacks. Uh, it's going to do a bunch of punches now. A 14 oh. hits. Bunch okay. of punches is my favorite monk ability. <laughs> <laughs> then first, I will also need a dexterity saving throw. <sighs> While I roll the second one. 12. Uh, it has a 12. good bonus, but. <laughs> uh, the one who stares falls prone. Uh... <laughs> okay. Ah, yes. wait, hey, hey. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and that oh, one hits. 22 no, hits. One. <laughs> I'm starting to feel kind of bad for it. Yeah, we. we <laughs> Like, it was built up to be this big epic standoff. Now that we're here, we could just, like, all ping up on such a number and start laughing on it. In case it comes up, um, yeah. T uh, Tekka's trying to inhibit this uh, one from moving, not trying to kill it. Just in mm -hmm. case that comes up. Okay. Thank you, sure. And then I will need a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay. 21. Okay, that didn't work. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, and then another attack. Bunch of punches. Well, yeah, well, now it's the quarter staff again, so. Ah, bunch of. <laughs> <laughs> now he's beating him with a stick. <laughs> I mean. 14 hits. <laughs> Alright, let's not forget everything that this thing has done to us up to this point. No, I don't feel bad. Just, just because it's. A little pathetic right now. Don't <laughs> lose that, that thread. I uh, know it's really cute now, but remember how vicious it was. And then uh, another dexterity saving throw. Thank you. <laughs> Twenty-four. Wait, many, wait, is this the fourth one? What? What is going on? Are you blows? Bunch of punches. Mm -hmm. Monks, man. Monks. Yeah, Level it's a fourth five one. Monks for attacks. Um, so what did it roll this time? Uh, I rolled, uh, this number 24. Okay, well, that didn't land either. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm more than happy with how that turned out. <laughs> that's Tekka's turn. Wow, Brooke. Uh, and actually, hold on, you, uh, you hit... Oh, no, 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 no. This is an open hand thing, right? Because it can do the reactions thing, but never mind. Oh, right, not take reactions. Yeah. yeah, that that was an option, but yeah, they just... Yeah, never mind. I forgot that that was an option. It's not, like, tied into them. Mm -hmm. It's been a minute. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a prone target. True. Well, I will have to end here. So. Uh, can you right. go diagonal and floor? get to the... Because you can make all your attacks there and then move another five feet... I can just walk over here after that? Yeah, because you can go through Casimir. Okay, sure. But that way you're flank. I mean, it's prone anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> but you'll want to move so that you don't get blown up by the dubstep or yeah. right next to you. <laughs> All right. I'll <laughs> hit it once. 
non-lethal. Please. One second. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> non-lethal! Not even with advantage. You didn't even roll advantage. Don't yeah. need it. <laughs> Don't need it. Add it to the so, counter. Uh, uh, do I, once again, do I roll twice or? Yes, you roll twice as many dice. So if you have the right damage, you'd add an extra one of those. I, okay, I don't have that. Okay. Then yeah, two of those. Okay. That's 13. Three. Slashing. <clears throat> and then the second attack. Remember to roll with advantage. Oh. Oh, well. Just in case. Secret. Uh, that ain't it. Uh, yeah, do it again. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fine. We're just at 27 hits. <laughs> seven. One second. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's the damage. <laughs> <clears throat> and for my bonus action. the same on action, a non crit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for my bonus action, I would like to. Rage. <laughs> Sadly, I cannot do that. Oh. Uh, use the Blood Curse of Binding on it. Yeah. And I would amplify it. Which means I roll for 1d6 and he rolls for a strength. A strength is oh. through. Mm hmm. Okay. Disadvantage. Nice. Uh, six. Six? Oh, and you take minimum damage. Hell yeah. Did you say you rolled a six? I rolled a six, yes. Eh, eh, eh. Alright, speed is reduced to zero, and it cannot take reactions until the end. Uh, well, <laughs> it cannot take reactions. <laughs> and at the end of each of its turns, he can repeat the roll. Oh, and his speed's zero, so he can't stand yeah. up. <laughs> you can't do shit. You literally can't even use movement to stand up. That's so good. Brooke, are you moving to the square? Oh yeah, thanks for reminding me. So you don't take the damage from the... yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know how this works. You've, seen, really... you've seen the professor do this many times. I think Honestly. he's done it once when he wub-stepped on the river. Yeah. Oh, well, But it was okay. a lot. One time. <laughs> but it was impressive. Dennis playing a character that rolls the damage himself is kind of genius. <laughs> it really makes the best out of Dennis's rolls. Wait, what? Because Dennis, Dennis always rolls really low, so if he was rolling the damage himself, it might be a good that's, thing. Yeah, that's not how it worked for me. Oh, I you mean a character that damages itself, I see. Yeah. So, um... Dude, you'd be like the best healer wizard ever. <laughs> Guys, uh, I, uh, the, the one of the is cursed for strength, yeah? Yep. Yes. Uh, any of the effects currently on it, do any of them, um, would any of them put this, put them at disadvantage on acrobatics checks? Like being grappled, having speed zero. Uh, can you think of any of those things? Because I don't nope. think any of them do, but I, I, want, I want to check with you guys. Nope. No. Okay. So it has a chance to boot up a fight as Casimir has two chances of grappling it. So, uh. This die versus this die. It's the one who stares, this is Casimir. Um. The bonus that the two of them have. The one who stares succeeds on the first uh, contested grapple check. It's Casimir, this is the one who stares. And succeeds on the second one too. Uh, oh wait, Casimir has a third attack. I can replace that one with a grapple, right? Even mm -hmm. if it's a bonus action attack? Yeah, yeah, he can. Any attack. Uh, third, third attempt then. This is uh, the one who stares, this is Casimir. And would Casimir be at advantage because he's prone? 
It still is... No, I guess not. Mm, grappling, yeah, uh, it does... Being prone does not affect uh, grappling in particular. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Um, but on the third one, uh, Casimir manages to grab it from one of its front legs. And as the machine is flailing... Um, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Kazimir has to end its turn next to the sphere. That's okay. Um, well, it does have zero speed. Ah, it can't get up. Yep. Mm, yep. Okay. Uh, Kazimir <laughs> drags it over and then step back. St let's go and steps back. He can't drag him another. What do you want? Oh, you. I, I figured he'd put him in the ball. No, no, he doesn't have to put him in it. It's just within five feet of it. So, like, here would work and not well, hit sure. anyone else. Let's, let's have it here. <clears throat> and then Casimir ends turn here. Uh, <laughs> this can, is what's can... memories of trying to put a cat in bath water. <laughs> Wait, is the one who stares, like, forcing him to, to let go of the grapple? No, Casimir is letting go. Oh. It can't get up. Right? It, it has zero speed. It has zero speed. I mean, it could hold, but Casimir would rather not... Uh, I mean... Look, it's dying now. Well, <laughs> like, does sure. the damage happen at the start of the turn or at it's the end? It's the end of its turn. Uh, any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the orb. Okay. Uh, the one who stares cannot get up, does not have its bow, but does have its spear. Um, being prone means disadvantage on the attack rule. So, Brook. Mm-hmm. Oh, um... Wait, wait, oh, where's the sad block? I lost it. Here it is. Um, a disadvantage. Uh, a disadvantage is a 19 to hit. Yeah. Uh, the second one, a disadvantage, is going to be 16 to hit? Nope. Then you're hit for 8 piercing damage. Okay. Uh, the one series is flailing. One, uh, two of its legs are broken. One is just dangling, and the uh, uh, from from a thin strip of metal, and the other is uh, not moving. Uh, only one of its arms is functional, and with its uh, uh, last energy, it swings at Brook, uh, almost defiantly so. And then uh, Pontifex, roll your damage. And it has to make a deck save. Deck save. Yeah, DC uh, 16. What's it? Well, perhaps appropriately, uh, considering its condition, uh, it does not roll well. So my total is a 14. Uh, that's a fail, so it takes eight points of thunder damage. <coughs> it was four away from zero. Oh, so it just <sighs> gets shattered? Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. From the thunder? Yeah. No. Pretty much. The... No. As the uh, the the uh, the sphere pulsates with this magical energy, uh, you can all feel the vibrations in the air. You can feel them in your chest, uh, and the machine so close to the, to this energy uh, begins to fall apart and stops moving. You have vanquished uh, the bane of the jungle, the one who stares. Wop 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 wop. Sorry, I can't. I don't think I can do non non lethal damage. You cannot. No. Yeah. And every time I've thunder magic these machines before, they always like, burst into pieces. <laughs> so, uh, Squeak will quickly get away from the wub wub ball and uh, yeah, just if, say, if it falls "I swear to God, if you kill me again, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll drop concentration once so, it's." Uh, if it's like fallen into pieces and like there's no mistaking that it is dead, dead, I'll I'll dismiss it. Um, I mean, this, dead. This poor tree probably got rocked. Dead, um, is not a word I would use for a construct. 
If it is but it is inactive. visibly, sure, inactive. Oh, it's going to start continuing. picking up pieces. <laughs> okay. There's there's a lot of smaller pieces on the ground. Uh, the biggest one that ended up falling off uh, straight up is one of its legs. Um, but mainly it's like all the outside parts uh, uh, that make up its, uh, let's call it skin, uh, that have come off. Uh, and uh, you know how, like, have you ever seen, like, the inside? This is a stupid comparison, let me mind. Um, but uh, because of how human-like at least a portion of this machine looked, uh, it's a weird uh, and creepy sensation to be looking into its inner mechanisms. It feels a little off. Hmm. Oh. Alice is going to sit down and start sketching. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I, I made it. Whoa! <laughs> no! It's <Smack. laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it! I, I didn't I did know it what happened! I did it accidentally! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Ma, it's back! <laughs> that scared the crap out of me! Third level chromatic orb! <laughs> <laughs> Blow a hole in the floor! I got scared! Did we do it? It's done. You showed confidence in my approach. For that, I think. Somehow it worked. Oh. I'm glad. I'm glad to be with you, Lot. Wow. The, the animals of this jungle will be a lot safer with it gone, right? There may still be traps of its creation, but safer, yes. Brooke, this potion. I don't think your directions were correct, but I did not call <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're still trying to write it out of your mouth. Every time oh, the calipers is Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> this light coming out of his, of his ears, too. I'm trying to shield my eyes from the light coming out of your mouth. <laughs> 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 uh, it would come up to join the others, and he would, he would look at the, the body of the... Uh, the one who stares and uh, would be looking for any initials on it. <laughs> like on every other construct, Pip has seen the, mm -hmm. the same initials on it. Yeah, Pip is always uh, uh, almost every time the initials had been on the lower part of the machine, so that they'd have to be like flipped over, uh, belly area, chest area. Uh, so Pip knows where to look, and at first. Uh, uh, Pip doesn't see them, and so he starts looking through the pieces that have fallen off of the machine, some of the ones that Talix has, has gathered, some that are on the ground, and by the time he is certain that he has seen every piece of the machine that would have been uh, the lower part uh, of it, uh, or even just the, the, the chest, the, the human part of the chest, uh, he does not find the initials. And he keeps uh. looking behind his ears, uh, uh, everywhere. Hey, there's no OTH on this one. <sighs> no, uh, there were things that looked like this on those walls. I think the, uh, whoever built that tower, the people from way back, they built this. Perhaps our uh, OTH friend was inspired by them. That's possible. I am sad that Glimmer's lost a friend, but I think this was a good thing. 
And now the now the Atara can go home, right? Ah. The struggle's probably much better in their hands. And uh, the river should be safer for the settlers. I think, glimmer aside, everyone should benefit from this. I'm... I'm tired. <sighs> hey, we need to help... We need to help Mama Armabastu find her baby, though. We do not know this jungle. How do we find one small creature? Hey, hey, we ask the locals. We should, uh, if she's willing to talk to, talk to us now, we could ask her if she might know whether it was the ones that we met before. I don't know, uh, how, how to describe one arma boss to, to another, but, uh, it's a chance. Mm, yeah. They did come from this way, they said that much. They're the ones that led us here in the first place. So, what are we gonna do with this? It just kicks the construct. I want to recover as much of this as possible and try to figure out, well, everything I can about the people who built it. Just, uh, would um, everyone be up for staying the night in the tower? Mm -hmm. uh, about what time of day is it? Um, it's almost nine to fall. Oh, so it's like pretty dark. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's, 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 about, it's still yeah, yeah, there's still light, but it's gonna get, get dark soon. Let's just make sure Glimmer doesn't see any of this. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we could polish it up. And... No. Do Give not them show the this. <laughs> oh, um... Please don't. You do, uh, since Pip was looking at the, at the uh, machine all over, um, Pip would find something that uh, he recognizes on its, uh, on its person. Um, oh. It's... Pontifex's sensor. Mm. Hmm. Yoink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything uh, like that stands out about the the spear or the bow? Like, are they just like regular like wood handle with metal head, or are they made out of like weird materials or anything? Uh, like the arrows that Alex examined earlier, they are made with materials from the jungle. Uh, you can roll an investigation check to see if there is more you gather from it. Yes, please. That's all there is to this machine's weapons, but now that you have multiple um, of its arrows, um, there were 13 uh, left on it, uh, um, gathering them together, something that strikes you, and it's something that most people would, would overlook. Um, you don't know the inner mechanisms of a machine. You've, ne you've never built one. Um, your, your intelligence, your expertise is in certain fields uh, and engineering uh, machines is not one of them. Uh, just but deconstructing you, them. <laughs> just deconstructing them. But you know the basics where when a machine is built, it's built for a task and that task is performed with the absolute precision and a machine doing the same task multiple times would get the exact same results but all these errors all of them have imperfections to them they're not all identical to one another and the imperfections are not limited to just whatever materials the machine found uh, these imperfections feel almost human in the way that uh, uh, they have come to 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 have happened 
And there's no fleshy bits jutting out of this pile, right? Nothing. Parts of it are open, mm. so like you can even look inside. There, it's all metal. Uh, I'm gonna use my class feature to uh, instantly cast detect magic. Or I guess you tell me which of these, which I can do detect magic or identify, which of these two would be like more fitting. Uh, Pontifex is is drawing some lines uh, between this machine and what it does and to the consciousness in the journal. And there's like there's a hunch in his head that this thing may have been a similar thing, like of a person or personality that's been copied into an object. Uh, so uh, I don't know what would be the best way to detect that. I will not make that decision for you. Uh, which I one did I do on? Fun. I've detected magic on the journal before, and you said it was just like a, it was too weird, yeah. Like it, uh, it, it, did it give off like a distinct thing before? Yeah, I guess I'll I'll just do detect magic. I can also do detect magic if he asks me. <laughs> oh, there you go. You uh, can get both. Can yeah, I, if you, I guess you see like Pontifex doing his normal incantation for when he detects magic. I don't think you've ever done that in front of him. No, yes. I don't think he knows you can do that and furballs yeah, are uh, pretty uncommon, so. <laughs> but but uh, okay, yeah, if you like interject and he'll stop. Yeah, then I'll cast detect magic. I'm looking for similarities between uh, it and the book. Um, with with this comment spoken out loud, Brooke, the, the magic that you detect from this machine is nothing like what comes from Orm. Um, in fact, at first you don't even detect any magic, but you just you kneel down uh, and you take a better look. And you, it, it's like a very vague aura. It's weak, and it's not by design, but there is something. And it does not conform to any of your understanding of magic, any of your knowledge of magic. This does not uh, uh, fit in with any of the schools that you're familiar with. All right, I'll ask for the pen and paper again. And once I get that, I will write down that it has very little magic. It's not like the book, but I don't know the kind of magic. Is there any particular piece? Uh, that has the magic on it. Um, I can point at. Oh yeah. Uh, just, just to let you know, uh, 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 Dennis, uh, uh, like the answer to that question is that um, it permeates the entirety of it. No one piece has more or less than any of the others. <clears throat> All right, then I'll just make a gesture of the whole thing. <laughs> oh. uh, do we want to bring this back with us? I'd like to. Uh, I can. Okay, On then I'll, I'll use my class feature to instead uh, instantly ritual cast um, floating disc. Okay. Uh, the capacity of the floating disc, what is it, 500 pounds? 500 pounds? Yeah, 500 pounds. Okay, then it can uh, carry the remains of the one with stairs. So we'll, I guess, we'll start to scoop stuff onto it. Um, it lasts for an hour, and I can ritual cast it uh, in 66 seconds. Wait, no, a lot more. 660, whatever, 10 minutes plus 6 <laughs> seconds. So I can just, like, ritually cast it as we go to, mm -hmm. to floating disc it back. Yep, that's, that's fine. You're not, you're not, you're going back to the tower, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's not And then, far. like, eventually, whenever we probably take it anywhere, if we're going to go back to town, I can do this. This mm -hmm. can just be a wagon. <laughs> okay. Because I don't think there's a limit to its speed. It just, it, whenever I'm 20 feet away, it moves with me and it can go up and down yeah. stuff, but there's no limit to speed. So if I was on like horse, it'll just chase after me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of the horse, uh, Duchess? Uh, I'm going to go back and get her. She, uh, she like ran off into the woods, uh, a couple yeah, of hours I, ago. I this her. way, yeah, a handful of hours ago. Yeah. Hopefully she wouldn't have gone too far. I don't think she would have. Yeah, okay. I guess unless anyone's wanting to do anything else, we can floating disc this back to the tower and Talix can go get the horse. Yeah, since you have the 10 minutes for the casting, if Talix would like to, to look for her now. Um... Uh, the disc is instant. Oh, I, I thought you said it was... 
uh, it's a, my class feature lets me instantly ritual oh, cast right. things. Oh, right, you're doing it one. just now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then because it lasts an hour, I can ritual cast it to, like, keep it going. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, that's fine, then. Uh, you bring the remains from the one stairs at the tower where the the Armabastu was uh, uh, waiting for you at the base, uh, um, at the entrance, uh, uh, and hasn't moved. Uh, anyone looking for the horse can... Um, roll your choice of survival or investigation. Ooh, there's that roll. <laughs> uh, I will be giving this mini. There's killed by the dubstep, yeah. Death by dubstep. Oh, is that what these boxes are? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Little trophies. Oh, that's like kind of terrifying. <laughs> Jeez, um, Pontifex <laughs> kills a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He's more violent than I thought he was. Okay. <laughs> um, and Talix, uh, as you suspected, that just did not go too far. Um, she is actually surprisingly close to the tower. Um, based on, like, you just tried to go in a rough direction where you know that uh, uh, she, she ran, and then you tried to follow the tracks, and you notice that they looked around. It seems like she got back closer to the tower than she was at some point um and uh, she begins to excitedly tap the foot with her hooves when she sees you i'm just gonna run up and hug her and tell her i'm sorry she she pushes her face into your arms and then she pulls back and she's trying to look cool <laughs> all right Let's head back to that tower. It's safe there now. Alright. So, with all of you back at the tower, uh, where uh, you can also long rest in there if you'd like, um, I'm just going to call the session here. Uh, but before I do, there is one thing I would like to uh, let you all know in this particular circumstance as uh, uh, you have defeated one of uh, the, uh, uh, let's call them main uh, villains of, uh, of this continent. Uh, I will is, let is you he in. divine beast? I will let you in on a little secret. Huh? This huh? was uh, um, a player. What? This is a, another person who uh, made the one who stares. And uh, gave me instructions on how to play the one who stays. Oh. And uh, um, so before before I met Matt, I didn't find anyone who I wanted uh, to be a a fifth player in here. But every time we had a new campaign, we always added someone new. And so I took inspiration from a, a DM I had at the time, and I was like, I'm gonna have the villains of this campaign be controlled by actual people. <laughs> and you had just defeated one of them. There's many others. What? <laughs> That's a cool idea! It wow. is cool. Uh, That's so neat. <laughs> and it's, been, it's been a little secret I've held on to for a little while. Um, wow. and... Who did we kill? Uh, you <laughs> don't know this person. You don't know... I think you don't know any of them, in fact. But should you drop their name just um, for like But the... yes, he, his oh, the name, the, the person who uh, who came up with the one who stays, who named him, made his stat block too. Uh, his name is Tristan. He he is a fellow player and a fellow DM. He DMs for me. <clears throat> uh, and I play, I play one of his games and he uh, plays in one of the games that we're in. Uh, and uh, he is one of the best DMs I've ever had. Uh, he does horror. Like, he, do, he does, like, he, the, the way he can scare me when he DMs is incredible. And Those are the I, best. Tried, uh, I tried to, to, to leech off of that kind of energy for the jungle where his <laughs> character uh, was in. Um, 
And I, I'm, I'm not as good as he is, but that's my little tribute to him. So uh, thank you, Tristan, for contributing. Well, thanks, Tristan. You made a sufficiently yeah. terrifying yeah. creature yeah. that we had to strategize for like a week and a half. <laughs> the Buenos Aires <laughs> isn't like... The scariest encounter we've had. Yeah, yes. and, and it's not, you know, it, the strength of this creature wasn't in... He's not strong when fighting him head on. Uh, it's all about just like actually getting to him. Um, and, 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 you know, all the traps and all that. And Pontifex, yeah. uh, I think everyone at the end there uh, did something really cool uh, and contributed to the fight uh, and, and, and leading to the fight too. But like the, if Tasha's mind whip, I feel, is what yeah. did it. Because um, yeah. really he, because cool. he would have gotten away. He he can disengage his opponents. He's sort of like a rogue slash ranger yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, uh, he you said that it was hiding as a bonus action. action. Right. And I was like, oh no, uh, it's like using its bonus actions on its turns. And I was assuming the aiming is it doing the rogue aim. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, so it had there was one turn where he wasn't able to leave, and that was all you guys needed. Uh, yeah. So that was really cool. Uh, and if it had gone away you? from that one, I don't think I could have ever gotten back within range of Mind Whip because I was like pretty close to the fringe yeah. of Mind Whip reaching, anyways. And, yeah, it was right at sixty, and you were all out of spell slots. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm you happy with You had some pretty bad went. rolls there too, went there. <laughs> uh, some of them, yeah. I, yeah. I had a few. The DC yeah, sixteen this... int is like a really hard save to hit for mm. most things. So yeah, this this says you know low intelligence, high wisdom, uh, high dexterity. Um, yeah. Well, so I'm gonna call the great session character. here. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And uh, um, there is many more people out there <laughs> <laughs> who are scheming against you. So Can you uh, wrote, wow. Cool. Can you describe again for me, just like so get a better mental picture of this thing? Because now I'm thinking of a lion centaur with a flaming sword, uh, of like what this thing actually looked like. Because I'm guessing this is made by the player and they described it. They give uh, you yes, a description. Yes, I like, I like uh, he, like the first time I ran a concert by him and he like came up with the actual thing. Uh, the first thing he said was Rambo, but horse. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, okay. Perfect. And then, and then we uh, we moved on to uh, the the other description he had for it was uh, um, head of a tiger, torso torso of Rocky Balboa, and the legs of a mountain lion. <laughs> Great. <Right. laughs> so you're like, okay, but it's also a Terminator. <laughs> yes. Thank yes, you so he, much. he actually used the word Terminator as well. He was like, can I be <laughs> an ancient sentinel? I'm talking the Terminator. <laughs> Terminator, Rambo, Mountain Lion blended together. <laughs> Rambo, but horse. Also All Terminator. mechanical, yeah. <laughs> he was very good. excited. And now I gotta give him the news. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's what fantastic. Is. What a great creature. All right. I'll see you all next week. Thank you for the session. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks for the session. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs>